This is Create, Engage, Succeed with your co-hosts, Mary and Amadeus. This week's guest is... All right, hello and welcome to Create, Engage, Succeed. I'm your host today, Amadeus Sunley, joined by the lovely Sherelle Morris. Hello. She will be here to talk today about what she does and some upcoming offers she has. So Sherelle, why don't you introduce yourself and take it away? My name is Sherelle Morris and I'm down in New Mexico. So I'm across the border and I do energy work and I refer to it as rapid release and results because when you're working with energy, you're out of time and space. So things can happen very quickly and that's what I like. And I have a a program that's just starting now, but it's year round so you can join whenever and it's one-on-one and it is 20 minute laser sessions. There's 11 of them in the package. And in my mind, they're very much like Legos if something comes up and you need an hour, we just click them together and you have a bridge. It's all good. And what I find that I love about the 20 minutes is because it's so focused, we just jump right in to what the issue is. Mm-hmm. We'll work on that same issue for several sessions. Um, but it's fun uh, seeing people just kind of click in and get it and things come into alignment. Like. There's there's definitely something to be said about those really focused sessions of of anything really compared to, you know, you might say, oh, let's do something for three hours. And it's really easy to go, oh, we have a lot of time. We'll just kind of talk about this and talk about that. But if you have 20 minutes, then it's a, I'm thinking about my problems right now and let's, yeah. let's solve them. Yeah. Both elements work. Um, years ago, I was doing an advanced training with Michael Beckwith, who's fairly well known. Mm-hmm. And someone asks is Reverend Beckwith, if since we know that the energy, the, the five-step treatment or prayer that we use is what is is where the healing is, mm-hmm. and it takes maybe three to five minutes sort of thing, why do we book our clients for an hour? And Michael said, you know, it's right, it happens in that short period of time, but you have the hour. So you can work with the client and get them up to the point where they're willing to receive it. That makes sense. And take it in. So there's an advantage to those longer sessions. My group session is three hours a week. And um, and I'm teaching live for three hours. And we've done it in a three-hour run, Mm -hmm. which was actually really great, except you can actually only do it on Saturdays because trying to do three hours on a weeknight is like a little rough across three or four time zones. It's not fun. No, no, it's not. <laughs> but it lets everybody come together and connect because like if you and I were working on something in this group, mm. what you're learning and what I'm learning and what we're sharing is going to relate to everyone. Right. So it's fun, it's fun. But yeah, the 20 minutes, especially for clients who, why do you just don't have time for this? It's like, really, 20 minutes? Yeah, it's it's really hard to refuse a 20 minute session as opposed to, you know, like you just said, on a weekday, three hours after work, that can be a bit hard to manage. But 20 minutes, you go, okay, well, that's just, you know, like a, a break time. Yeah, and because you can set your sessions, you know, if you need to do it in the morning. I mean, outside of the fact that I do sleep from time to time, you have a fairly wide range. Those pesky um, sleeping hours. I know, it's so silly. But it's it's exciting to watch things happen so fast. I'm sure. And um, I studied sound and color healing at one point. I dove into a lot of areas. <laughs> And the, one of the things that I really liked, I worked with Fabi and my mom, who's considered the father of sound healing. And his 
associate Terrace is just this amazing woman healer. And we'd work with color silk. We had colors in light, we had them in silk, we had them in sound, everything lined up on the frequencies. And you'd see, I'd, like I'd be working with a client and I would see something somewhere on their body <laughs> and kind of get that it needed to go away. Mm -hmm. It was sort of dark and cloudy. Um, and that that part of their body needed a certain color. And I'd get this beautiful silk out and I'd lay it across them. And no more did it sort of drape across than this shadow thing just disappeared so it was like as fast as you could get it on and you just took it off immediately and I was like <clears throat> that's that's very interesting definitely and so more things have kind of come around to that I, I love to work in the quantum field with my clients mm -hmm. because again no time no space it really works <laughs> and I hear my clients talking about working there and I have them just kind of go and do their own process because I'm very committed to the fact that my clients need to understand that I'm not the person who's healing them. Mm -hmm. I am the person who's creating a space for them to step into. And in that space, the healing can occur. And it's between them and the infinite. You're more of that guide more than anything else than. Yeah. Yeah. And in that same vein, a lot of the tools I use, I can teach my clients to use, mm -hmm. you know, things having to do with stress and anxiety. I can't show up at your workplace when your boss is yelling for the most part, unless, <laughs> you know, unless you work at, you know, I don't know, a lab. We're in the middle of the two federal labs. <clears throat> you could do some really serious stuff and I could get there fast. But it's so much better when you can do these things for yourself so that when you start to feel stress or you feel something that's happening that's kind of beginning to trigger something, you can immediately release it. Because having that sort of stress they're squeaking now. Having that stacked up is where you start having problems with it. Because stress, stress will kill you. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's I, I, I think it's yeah. something that people really underestimate is how much fatigue physically and mentally you accumulate with stress because it's just a, a, a it's whatever this part of the day. But if you don't, if you don't get rid of it and you don't let it, if you just let it accumulate, it's it's really bad for you. Well, yeah, and I, I remember, and this was several decades back, you probably weren't alive yet, but <laughs> there was this whole study, and one of the things they were looking at is why more people die on Monday morning than any other day. And what they came up with is, was the stress around going to work. After that relaxing weekend, you're starting the work week again, and well, and you may not have relaxed over the weekend. Very true. Very true. And um, when the whole COVID thing hit, mm -hmm. you know, online, people were just freaking out. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I have to tell you, I can pretty much guarantee you, if you're not breathing deeply, that does not help you or your <laughs> immune system. No, don't do that. And I started doing Facebook lives, which I've been avoiding, but I kind of go, okay, now we're going to breathe for the next five minutes. You're going to breathe deeply and consciously. And if you do it a couple of times a day, your day will be better. And um, it led into my first program, which will get renamed because <laughs> <laughs> I kind of get snarky with things sometimes. And it's called breezing through the pandemic. Because, <laughs> um, you know, there are there was a little bit of breath work, a little bit of grounding, a little bit of energy stuff, you know, five days of like cool stuff. And it keeps you in your body, mm -hmm. reminding you, you need to breathe deeply once in a while, because we have a tendency to just do really shallow breathing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 
And interestingly enough, the body reads shallow breath as you catching your breath. Like there's a lion right there <laughs> and it's coming this way and you go, <gasps> and that triggers your stress to get you moving. But if every breath you take like that, and that's not exactly, a, you know, there is a song for that. Um, but when you're doing, when that's the way you're breathing, you're telling your body you're in stress every minute. There's another fear. There's another stress. There's another panic. And it just layers up. Like, you know, on the inside of your body in places that are supposed to be flexible and movable and breathing and they're not. It is, it is amazing how much breathing affects just your everyday life. That was, as an athlete, that was something we learned really early on was like, yeah. it's very important that you are breathing properly and not just going, just because yeah. you've run, that's when it's more important that you're really getting that oxygen everywhere and yeah. inhaling and keeping everything going. Don't just freeze up. That's the worst thing you can possibly do. Absolutely. And yet, I mean, it's finally sort of being acknowledged, like science has discovered that breathing is important. <laughs> Crazy, it took this long, huh? What a concept. <laughs> Have you been to India recently? <laughs> I knew that about 8,000 million years ago. And the one that, the, the latest one that I love is that actually you should sleep with your mouth closed. <laughs> it's like, yeah, besides yeah. being maybe a little more hospitable for your partner um it's actually it you know it's throwing things off and i was reading an article and this su su suggestion was and i guess this is you know valid it's like tape your lips together <laughs> i mean that's one way of doing it i suppose because, well it, it kind of at first i thought well these people are crazy but then i read it's like they're talking about it becomes habitual you have a stopped up nose for a while or whatever mm -hmm. And you just get used to it. So the little piece of tape kind of gets you started like, oh, yeah, okay, I just have to leave my mouth closed. It's okay. I can breathe. <laughs> I that won't makes sense, die. actually. Yeah. And again, I find it when they go, look what we discovered. It's like, yeah. Crazy. For those of you who have been breathing most of your life, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. You've discovered this brand new concept. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you know, if you only had thought about patenting it before the rest of the world discovered breathing was important. <laughs> Sorry. So with those said, um, what got you into wanting to kind of guide people with all these techniques? Because I know you said you've been interested in it for a long time but what kind of made those gears shift to taking it to other people? Well, I actually started working with other people back in the mid eighties. Oh, wow. And I got my practitioners when I was pra practicing to be a practitioner. Before that, I was in film and television. I had an interesting <laughs> double life. I had like- I was gonna say, stuff. that's a- Yeah, and then I worked on Hill Street Blues. Oh uh, it's like there's bodies everywhere um i guess it was more like the 90s i had become a practitioner so i understood how to do that and i worked with people and the ch small church i was with moved into west hollywood at the beginning of the aids epidemic wow so i was doing hospital visits our our church maybe had 200 members, we were small. Mm -hmm. And we, I mean, not me specifically at all. There were, it was a large group of people doing this work. We did 200 memorials in one year. Wow. So in the practitioner training, I got used to working with people because we would work with people in practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Down the road, a few blocks was Louise Hay's Hayride, and we'd go there. Marianne Williamson was sort of at the other part of town. So I got to see how some amazing people worked. And then when I got uh, more involved with the shamanic world, working with Lynn Andrews, um, 
in putting her events together. And I would be the one, she would say, I, I want to do a ceremony about this. And I would design it and put it together. And at one point we had, we'd started a four year school. And the first year at the end of the year, all the students came together and we had a four day event. And Lynn arrived with full blown pneumonia and could not speak. So I was on stage, <laughs> but I've never really been shy about such things. My father used to love to tell a story that when I was about three and he was taking care of me for the day because my mom taught school. He brought me to this business breakfast he had with his business partners and we were in this nice restaurant. We lived in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman came in and he got everyone's attention because he had something to tell everyone in the room and he started talking. And I thought, well, that's boring. I'm bored. And I climbed up on the tabletop and started singing, you are my sunshine at the <laughs> top of my lungs. And the gentleman who was trying to get attention was a, a politician here in the US named Barry Goldwater. Wow. And he knew enough about politics to not try to shut up a little blonde girl. Not a good call. Yeah, so he <laughs> left. <laughs> That's it. I became democratic at a very young age. Um, but there was, I had, I was like, okay with that stuff and mm -hmm. being on stage. So I was working with people and doing healing work in circles back then. And I eventually <clears throat> left film and television and I'd been doing live events with Lynn Andrews and in a very strange set of circumstances, which we won't go into <laughs> here, but they're very crazy and weird, but appropriate for my world. <laughs> I ended up being invited to go to Las Vegas and attend a conference called DEF CON. DEF -Con, talked about that before. Yeah, DEF CON is the world's largest hacker conference. Back mm -hmm. then it was only like 800 people. And I went slightly terrified because <laughs> I only knew about hackers from what had been said on the news, which was not good. Not the most flattering of stuff. No. But I met two or three people right as I got there. And then I saw these young guys talking to this gentleman who could potentially be my grandfather. And they were so engaged, wanting to hear from him, wanting to learn from him, which is something from my perspective is seriously missing in our culture. Mm -hmm. You know, youth being taught by elders. And I fell in love with the, commu the community. And I've been with DEF CON now 24 years in 2019 we had gone from like this 100 800 people they started 134 people 27 years later 32,000 people wow and dark tangent who founded defcon and black hat knows about my background with healing and energy work so we had a problem with people coming to DEF CON who really, they were just coming to party and drink, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing, but it interfered with the community. Con right, there's a time and a place for it. Yeah. And so Jeff thought he'd raise the price of the three-day conference from $40 to 50. And I'm like, <laughs> they won't even know, they're drunk. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? uh, and I called Jeff a little while later. I'd been sort of thinking, I said, I want to go to the rooftop of the hotel before we open and do a ceremony. He's like, okay, do that. And I did. I took a few people with me. And the next day when we opened, there were none of those people. Amazing. It was fun. And I kept hearing back from people going, well, the speaker in that room, before he talked, he said, don't you think it, like, it feels really different? There was a shaman thing on a roof, apparently. <laughs> of course it feels different. So that was one of my first real connections of how I could use what I do in business. 
I mean, that's a that's a great way to use it. Well, we are running close on yes. ending this up. So <laughs> if you want to if you want to go ahead and talk about some of your upcoming events, sure. And what you're currently going through, now would be a perfect time. Well, I have open now and you'll I'll get you some links that you can put with this and such. Uh, what I call radical clarity. And it's one on one, it's 20 minute laser sessions. The offer is 11 sessions. And again, you can put them together like, you know, Legos, uh, if you want an hour somewhere in there, um, to get people focused to finish what they really want to get done in 2021. We're, in, we're almost to the last quarter. Time is running out. <laughs> Two and more months. You, yeah, wouldn't you like to go through the holidays excited and happy because everything was handled? That would be very nice. And now you can look at 2022. So that's one. And it's 11 sessions. I lowered the price for this offer. It's $888. Good, good, good numbers. It's good number. Yeah, I can, that's the feng shui part of me. Um, and then I will be rerunning my seven week program. These are all live. I don't like drop videos and stuff. This is both all of these are fully all live. Excellent. Um, called Radical Freedom. And it's seven weeks, three hours a week. And what we're going to do is you, I want people to start understanding and being able to hear or sense what their inner senses, their inner superpowers are telling them. I mean, we know we have imagination. We know we have intuition, but I swear it's like the iceberg. You understand about 5% of it. You only use about 5% of it. And you probably don't even trust half of that, <laughs> so, which is good. I mean, it's a, you have to learn the language that this is all coming in. What does it mean? If I'm seeing blue around people, certain people, why, what? So I, I tell my clients, it's like, don't sit here tonight and think, hmm, I need to buy a $5 million home. That's what I'm getting. No. I <laughs> missed it just a little bit. Let's wait. Let's, you know, or whatever it might be, you have to learn these things. Right. So we work with a, a sacred wheel. We work with Oracle, Oracle energies. We also go into the quantum field because it's fast. We like that. We do like fast. And probably most, the thing most people are, really startled about because a lot of it startles people when they start realizing how much brilliance there is within them mm -hmm. once they allow it to, to be accepted but on week four when we're studying instinct i realized most of my instinctual power really came to the front when i had my i did a ceremony for my power animal mm -hmm. And my power animal is a jaguar. I have other animals I work with, but that's my animal. So we go to the quantum field and I take them on a journey to find their power animal, which is very fun. And I, I can attest that there's definitely some usefulness to this as we were in a group together. And I know some of the people that she had worked with to find their power animals. There is a very noticeable change in their <laughs> demeanor and how just they acted in a much more positive fashion, very confident in themselves yeah. after they worked with you. Well, I had, with DEF CON, as we were getting so big, I started having this vision of how we needed to shift things because we needed more hotels. Mm -hmm. And we were working with Caesars. And in the center of like where Caesars Palace is, they own six hotels right there, like right there. Yeah. And it was like, I need all of them. <laughs> I need all of those meeting spaces. I need rooms in all of them. They won't give them all to me, but they'll give me a chunk <laughs> of rooms in everyone. Took me four trips into Las Vegas to meet with Caesar's sales department to explain this and explain it. And on the third trip in, I went, okay, I need a little more power here. <laughs> so I brought in my Jaguar. And the thing with power animals, especially one that's very high up on the food chain, <laughs> kind of scary to all other animals, is that it makes 
even though other people in the room don't know what their power animal is for the most part. It's still there. There's an energy. Yeah. I mean, Lynn taught her animal's a wolf and she had a meeting with um, a, a reporter for an interview who was getting really snarky and her wolf sort of showed up and Lynn looked at this guy and he was twitching and she went, ah, field mouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he behaved. And all of a sudden, the sales department kind of went, wait a minute, this means you're going to put a thousand people in each of these hotels. That's really good for us. I'm like, yeah. It's good for, crazy how it's good for business like that. <laughs> and I need you, and I need this contracted the contract done in ways that you're going to have to go to your legal department and get it clear, blah, blah, blah. We got it. We got it. And it's like, it's great for the community. Yeah. And that was the point. The community needs to be where they can connect. Well, on that excellent note, we just about out of time. Yeah. Come and play. So excellent. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun to be here. Excellent. And we will get those links posted. So everyone watching this, you can get access to the Rapid Clarity and her other laser focus sessions. Rapid Clarity and Radical Freedom. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you again next week. This has been your host, Amadeus Dunley and Sherelle Morris. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. We'll see you next time. Remember to like and subscribe.